1.3 is a thing of beauty and let me show you why that is the case so consider the product 1 plus 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1 over 3 and lastly multiplied by 1 plus 1 over 4 so on and so on each factor in the product is of the form 1 plus 1 over n for which n is greater or equals to 2 as we can clearly as we can clearly see from the first term that that is the case and then the question is saying determine all the values of n for which the product will be an integer value determine all the values of n for which the product will be an integer value so this product as it is is very hard to digest but we can change it a bit let me show you in what way we can change it so let me just uh, drag these down and show you a couple of things I want to drag these down um, there we go so instead of having 1 plus 1 over 2 let's just put that in our calculator uh, I get 3 over 2 so here the first term that I have is 3 over 2 right and then let's move to the second term 1 plus 1 over 3 that is 4 over 3 and then the third term 1 plus 1 over 4 that is 5 over 4 right 5 over 4 uh, let me rewrite that so these are the terms of the product not the terms of the sequence uh, let me put it here so that i can show you something and then this pattern goes up until 1 plus 1 over n right of which we do not know so the last term here that we have it's 1 plus 1 over n but we can do the same thing for that term well not the same thing but we can also rewrite that term let me show you how 1 plus 1 over n 1 plus 1 over n is the same as n plus 1 over n because if we give uh, both those two terms on the numerator a denominator of n would end up with 1 plus 1 over n so instead of writing 1 plus 1 over n we can write n plus 1 everything over n but it does not end there it does not end there there's another layer of complexity that i want to introduce here so that is uh, the last term right for some n terms right that is the last term so <laughs> that is the last term but i want us to think about uh, the term that comes before this one I want us to think about the term that comes before that one so the term that comes before this one is supposed to be so this is the last term so i want us to concentrate on the term that comes before that one the term that comes before that one it should have a numerator of n minus one right plus one because it is the term that comes before n so it must be n minus one so on the uh, denominator also uh, we are supposed to have n minus one we are replacing n with n minus one so uh, let's put that term together with the other terms so we are saying that the first term is three over two three over two it is followed by four over three and then after that we have five over four and then we have some terms before the last term n minus one plus one is just n right so we have n divided by n minus one and then after n divided by n minus 1 we have n plus 1 divided by n that's what we have so let me erase this and show you what happens here you can see for the first three terms that 3 and 3 will cancel out right after that 4 and 4 cancels out 4 and 4 cancels out if you were to add the fourth term there you would see that 5 and 5 would cancel out so ultimately uh, we are left with 1 over 2 right after 3 and 3 cancels out we are left with 1 over 2 up until these last two terms but with the last two terms n and n cancels out that's easy to see that n and n cancels out so we have some 1 over n minus 1 and lastly the last term that we have is n plus 1 right so that's what we're gonna have so let's see how these two terms behave 1 over 2 and n plus 1 let's see how 
they behave. We want the product to be an integer, right? An integer is a number that is not a fraction. It's, it's a whole number, right? So when can these be whole? When can we multiply these two things and have a whole number? It's when n plus 1 is even. Because take a look at this. If n plus 1 is odd, we're going to have 3 over 2. And that is not whole, right? If n is odd, we're going to have 5 over 2. And that is not whole. But if n plus 1 is actually even, then we can have 4 over 2, which is 2, right? We can have 6 over 2, which is 2. So how can we achieve that? If n is equal to 3, our condition is satisfied, right? Because we're going to have 4 divided by 2. If n is equal to 5, we're going to have 6 divided by 2. If n is equal to 7, we're going to have 8 divided by 2 so on and so on so n can be 3 5 7 and 9 up until infinity right some infinity odd number so that our product can be an integer so there we go